Welcome to Freeways, a wonderfully simplistic and easy to play game about making interchanges, directing traffic from entrances to exits, and designing interchanges to manage traffic flow. Initially it can seem simple and easy, but with the inability to remove roads once built it can become increasingly complex as advanced levels add obstacles, buildings and larger amounts of connections to manage. The goal of the game is to achieve high efficiency scores on your interchanges. After connecting all the roads and completing your network, you simulate the level to reach a score on how much road you used, the flow of traffic through your roads, and the complexity of your interchange, as long as the traffic doesn't jam. It's a fun and addictive game that can teach you a lot about roads, however its simplistic nature means you'll be able to make some unrealistic roads too. This video is an introductory guide to the game where I'll be walking you through some basic tips, tricks that I've learned as well as running some experiments, getting high scores and so without further ado, let's jump right into it. Let's start with one of the most important and basic things in this game, the signs at the sides of the screen. These are extremely important because if you click on them, they're going to show you where the traffic goes to. So from purple to red, from red to purple, and blue will go to both of these destinations. Now, if we are to clear the map so there is no connections, you'll see when we click on the signs, the arrows are blinking. And that's to show you that there isn't a connection in place. So if I drag that around to there, you'll see that now only one of the arrows is blinking. Now, another important thing about these arrows is the size of them. If we go into this level right here, you will see that this has a very big arrow going over to red. And that is because most of the traffic is going to go over here. So the size of the arrow is equal to the amount of traffic. You can see uh, red goes to blue, blue goes to green. And this will help you with laying out your levels. As you can see on this one, it's not a greatly designed roundabout but as well as the roundabout in the middle we have these little slip lanes over on the side and that's because the bulk of the traffic is going to whiz around from here to the next destination. The next important thing to know is there's actually a limit to the amount of road that you can place in a world although I'm yet to see a world where you actually run out of concrete. If you look at the truck down the bottom here you're going to see it blinking and that's because we're using up some of that concrete. Now another thing you can do in this game is you can change the elevation of ramps. So you can go up to this level to go over those roads and then you can go up to this level to go over the roads that I've just made. Now a simple experiment will show us that it costs more to use the concrete that is uh, elevated up higher. So if I just start to fill up the screen like this you'll see that very quickly we are running out of concrete and also the colour of the concrete changes based on the height that you're going at. So now we're out of concrete like that. Uh, if we go and clear this level and just use the basic amount of concrete and start filling in all of this, you're going to see that we have an absolute ton of this stuff to use right here. And apparently we've completed the network as well. So the higher up you go, the more concrete it uses. And since we completed the network, why don't we just simulate this? You know, it's not my proudest level, but uh, <laughs> it seems to work. And we've got an efficiency of 31. That's pretty crazy. This next tip is about the amount of concrete you're using as it affects the efficiencies of your levels. Because we've got two overpasses here, it means we're using up a little bit more concrete. So sometimes it makes sense to use crossroads, but not all of the time. In this case, the amount of traffic going over from there to there is so minimal that crossroads are probably not going to cause as much traffic. Uh, with the case of these two, it's probably not a good idea to cross them over. So a better solution to this level is to go up like so, to build the bridge over, drop it down gently into there and make that connection. Then when we're going from side to side, what we can do is go straight across that road because there is not a lot of traffic on it. Now when it comes to this road right here, what you want to do is have a bridge over it, but try and make it as short as possible to keep your efficiency good and have been a little bit cheeky there we're kind of close that might actually cause a problem but hopefully not and if we simulate this level we should see that we get a higher score overall because we've used less concrete and we made use of those crossroads and there you go we got 241 as our score now my next tip is about roundabouts there is a time and place to use a roundabout and this is one of those right here, which is why we have such a low efficiency score on a cloverleaf level, because it's the wrong interchange. And why is the reason that it's the wrong interchange? Because there is a low amount of traffic passing through here. So when you have low amounts of traffic, that's the best time to use a roundabout, as the road will be shared by all of the traffic going to the different destinations. And there we have it. We've got a small roundabout in the middle. All the roads connect to it, and that gives us a score of 159, which is higher than what we had before. 
But we can make that higher even still, and that's by making a larger roundabout. Because we have a small roundabout here, it means that all of these roads have to travel closer to it. And essentially it's two bits of road for every one. So what I'm going to do is wipe this level, and I'm going to make the roundabout even bigger. So there we go, I've completed the network, let's simulate it. You can see that the cars travel a similar distance, but what we should see is a higher score because we've used less concrete. And there you go, we're now up to 169. Also means that we've unlocked the picture for this level, which is something I haven't told you about. So let's go and talk about that in a second. But some of the levels you can unlock these pictures, and this one tells me that a roundabout is apparently not how it was done, which is not what I was expecting to see here. So let's try one last thing. We're going to use a lot more concrete doing it this way. Let's clear this. Let's drag a road simply from one side to the other and have some crossroads in the middle. So you could argue that my wobbly roads might cause a bit of a problem here. That would be a fair argument, but let's just simulate this. The traffic moves through it very nice, doesn't it? And let's see what our score is going to be. 156. So a roundabout is better than a crossroad sometimes. At 293, this level has a reasonable score, and a moment ago when talking about roundabouts I said that traffic was important. As you can see, large traffic on all of these. So what we're going to do is clear the level, I'm going to build a big roundabout here, and we're going to see that unfortunately it's not going to be as effective. There it is, a completed network. Let's simulate this and we'll see uh, large amounts of traffic, not good for roundabouts, I'm surprised it hasn't jammed. And uh, that means we end up with a very low efficiency score of 62. So not always good for a roundabout. So a couple of levels ago, the crossroads run where we did the small roundabout, we unlocked a picture. That's because it was a picture level. There are 24 of these in total and hidden behind a score is a picture that you can unlock. And the way to get to the picture menu is by clicking on this question mark here. So once you've unlocked this level, you can actually click on that and it's a little menu as you can see. There's some text to read with some basic instructions. You've got some options down the bottom including resetting the world, which is not something I want to do right now. I want to complete this world. Uh, but then you'll be able to see the, the different pictures that you've unlocked on the sides and the pictures of different interchanges, which will give you some ideas for the levels. It occurs to me now as I'm recording this video that there could be more of these buttons I'm yet to see in this world map. And there is actually another one down here that I've unlocked. If I click on this, it's going to remove all of the scores, including the world efficiency score up in the top left. Next up, we're going to talk about obstacles and placing down roads. We've got some obstacles in this level, which is quite a complicated one. As you can see, we've got some buildings, we've got some water over here and a wall. And you'll see that this one wants to go to... Uh, all of these destinations over here. So obviously, we'd want to go to the right. Except problem is, at that height, we can't go across. At the regular height, we can't go across. And at the next height up as well, you can't go across here. It's a complete and utter wall. And the same thing can be said of these buildings as well. If we go up to that level, we can't go into this thing. If we then go from that level to the next level, we also can't go through there. But the same is not for the water. Can't go into it at that level, but as soon as you raise it up, you can go over the top of the water. Now when it comes to placing down these roads, you should imagine the circle shape as just being a singular dot in the very middle of it because you'll be able to get away with road placement like this. We can actually go really close and over the edge there and cars will actually travel through there. So they're going to come out of here. Where do they want to go to? They want to go to blue. So let's do that and uh, what you're going to see is that the car has no problem going through the edge of that right there. So that's a little tip to get more space uh, out of this. Um, the same thing can be done with the water as well. You can go very close to it and when you're building your bridges over the water, you can bring it a fair way close and then you can tap upwards. And that way you're saving a little bit more concrete by going very close to it. And the same can be said when you come down as well. Just get a little bit over the edge. And I'm actually pressing the drop down button there, which I can't do. So slightly further, bam. And then we've used a tiny, less, a tiny amount less concrete. I feel like this next tip was almost not worth including as it's so obvious. But don't make turns like that. The cars are going to slow down when they have tight turns. What you want is to make your turns nice and smooth like this so they can keep their speed. And that's going to allow the traffic to flow faster and that increases your overall score. So avoid tight little turns like that. On some levels, it's kind of unavoidable as when you get to later parts of the game, you're going to have some levels with roads weaving all over the place and lots of little connections. But try and keep your connections as smooth as possible is the general idea. 
So when it comes to tight turns, we slow down the cars. But what about tight junctions where they join like this? Well, two of them are meeting there. You can see that the one slows down. They slow down for the other. Over here, though, the car stops completely, which is possible on a tight one like this. But from my many tests and observations, when you have the roads merging like this, a lot of the time, one of the cars will just stop suddenly as the other one sort of comes right in front of it. So this can actually be a bad connection. I think the idea is to get a reasonable balance somewhere between the two of them. Uh, this one over here is a lot tighter. And as you can see, the car always slows down. It seems to see the other one. So that's something else to keep in mind when it comes to traffic flow. So that pretty much concludes most of my advice, the tips and tricks that I know, and we did some experiments there as well. Of course, you can do more of your own. I want to show you two more things, though. I got a high score on this level over here, and this was literally the first attempt at me making this level. So I've got a feeling if I squeeze the roads a little bit closer together, maybe adjust one or two more things here, I could probably get an even better score on this one. But you saw it down the bottom there, 658. The traffic absolutely flows down through this one. But my guess is that probably it's actually just a very easy level. Now, if we go to the level directly above it, this is a picture level. If we simulate it, we can unlock the picture. Uh, it's not really an Easter egg. It's just something I wanted to show you, maybe motivate you to play. When you click on the picture here, it's actually an opportunity to get your own interchange into the game. So if you come up with a really cool design of your own, you can send it to the game dev and possibly have it featured in the game right there, which I think is really cool. So that's it from me, this Freeways video. I hope you found this video useful and, uh, and helpful. And if you have, please do consider leaving a like. It helps me out here on YouTube. And if you look in the description box down below, you can find the playlist of me playing this game. I've made five other videos before it where I didn't really know what I was doing. So I've taken the time to really get my head around this game. And I very much enjoyed that and making this video. So thank you for watching it. And I'll probably see you soon with some more Freeways videos.